I just want to say how proud I am of you guys. I have an announcement to make about our sales. Our sales this fiscal year Well, it's triple. <laughs> That's right, they've tripled. And we're gonna celebrate. I'm giving you guys a week off. You deserve it. Much more. You're all gonna get everything you deserve. You have my word on that. They say that business and family don't mix. But here, on this team, the greatest freaking team I've had since I took over this company, I have my two sisters and two men. They might as well be my brothers. There. I said it. I'm on. You'll honor me by joining me for dinner. Since you and Lily started dating, uh, we've yet to discuss it and I just want you to know that you have my blessing wholeheartedly, not only as a treasured member of SFS Technologies, but as a member of my family. Isabella. Is she okay? Oh no, was she the one that ate that old taco? Yo, what's going on, man? Come in. How you doing, Frank? I'm fine, man. What's going on? I had a party last night. Yeah? Yeah! Oh, come on, sit down. Have a drink with me. <clears throat> How's that job going? How are your savings holding up? 
Fine. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm the big brother here. I'm supposed to be looking out for you, remember? That page there is pretty blank. Ah, uh, that is something new. What happened to your other novel? I put it away for now. How many rejections this time? Three hundred forty-two. Listen, I'm not quitting on it yet. All right, I just got tired of writing query letters again. I, I, I got the urge to to express something else. Huh? I just don't quite know what that is yet. Bro, well, if there's one thing I know about you, it's that you never give up. You never have. And you know what? what? That might be your problem. <laughs> okay. Do you know why I always beat you at poker? Shut the fuck up, bro. I don't always lose at because poker. Because you either. never know Seriously. when to fold your damn cards. Oh. <laughs> okay. So now that you got this big job and you're making all this money, what, you know everything now? Listen, I told you I'm, I'm fine. Okay? <clears throat> Come on, man. Sit down. I'm, uh, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Come on. Dad asked about you. Yeah. What did he say? He wanted to know, you know, if you had a job, another woman. Of course I have a job. He knows he I meant got a job. He a real job, man. Look, you tried, but it didn't work out. It's time to fold your cards and cash what chips you have left. <sighs> Ow. Listen, man, I think, I know you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not. I'm not. No, coming here telling me to quit on being me, and you didn't do the right thing choosing the path you're on either. Don't give me this poetic bullshit. Do you plan on retiring with this company? Yeah, sure, why not? What's wrong with that? Oh, so you see yourself 30 years from now working for this company. Why wouldn't I? You seem to forget that I know you, little brother. No, you don't. You know who you wanted me to be. That's it. Listen, man. I only wanted you to be you. What makes you think I'm not being me? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so when you woke up this morning, do you remember feeling that sadness you used to talk about? I met someone. She works there. If you knew how much I care about her, you'd know it wouldn't matter what job it was, if it meant I could be with her. Of course it matters, man. If... <laughs> Listen, if you're not being you, then this whole relationship would just be built on a lie. What the fuck are you talking about? Are you still drunk? Look, man, I came here to offer you a job. At your company. Yeah, but it's not what you think. The only position open was the janitorial position. Is that all a liberal arts degree qualifies me for? I hate to say it, but yeah. Get the fuck out of here, man. <clears throat> Dude, I tell... <laughs> I thought you were here just to shoot the shit, catch up. I'm here because mom and dad told me to come here. Your phone's disconnected, they're worried. Coming from the guy that calls them what, once a year? Oh, whatever, man, you're hopeless. Yeah, no, you are. You remember this? What? That. You wrote that. I did. You stayed up all night writing that. You don't remember? It was a great read. Night's Quest? I was just a kid. 
So? So I only wrote it because I looked up to you. I wanted you to respect me. I did. I... <clears throat> I do respect you. Yeah, well, Frank, I don't respect you. Not anymore. Not for a long time. I love you, but I just... I just don't. Page two. What? Page two. Read page two. The night gets lost in the ancient forest. All he has to do is find the courage to journey to the tower, slay the dragon guarding it, and get to the top so he can get his bearings again. You're the night man. And so am I. The difference between us is, I'm fighting that dragon right now and you just sat down against a tree and accepted that you'll never defeat it. Even if I fail, it beats always wondering if I could have won. I'll consider your job. But if I take it, it'll be for the same reason the knight in your story helped the dwarf in the forest. For food. Nothing else. I hate the night. Never stop being a knight. Even as he served the dwarf cutting down trees and building his stable, he never called himself a woodcutter, never called himself a carpenter. As he toiled away for the dwarf, the dragon in that tower were always on his mind. No, you keep that. Take care of yourself. Frank, I didn't mean what I said about not respecting you. I'm just... Dude, just forget about it. Get out of here. <clears throat> I've got work to do. Victor, what's up, man? Yeah, sure. Uh, hold on. It's only temporary. As soon as I find something better, I'll let you know. I will. Yeah. Think about it. I must seem like a crazy person right now. No. No, not at all. Really? Yeah, I mean, you seem more free than just about anybody I know. If only I was. You're not? 
You don't waste any time, do you? I know what you meant. Do you consider yourself free? I used to. What about now? Well, uh... Once upon a time, I used to believe in something. That anything was possible. Seriously? You believe that? Like, as an adult? Well, I haven't quite lost my faith yet. But yeah. I mean, some things are just impossible no matter how much you don't want them to be. Like what? Um, like flying? Well, yeah. Tell it to the Wright brothers. Okay, yeah, but I meant, like, can you just take off and fly without an airplane? I mean, I don't know. I've never tried. You? No. <laughs> I mean, everything I've set out to do up until now, I've accomplished, but now I, I guess I, uh, I feel tired. And, uh, sort of feel like I've lost my passion. Uh, okay, I feel like I've walked a thousand fucking miles and I got up to this mountain range and I climbed to the very fucking top only to see another vast expanse of wilderness that leads to the horizon. You're concentrating too much on the destination and not enough on the journey. Well, I mean, the journey could be important. True. But the destinations will keep you on track. It's what keeps you focused, keeps you keeps you walking. You're fine. You're you're okay. Mm -hmm. You just got lost in the fog, lost sight of where you're going. But you know the way. I mean, instead of focusing on the destination, just concentrate on your feet and keep walking. The fog will lift eventually, right? I'll try that. What's your destination, if you don't mind me asking? Well, ideally, a better world. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let me know if you find it. <laughs> we can make our world better. How's that? By making ourselves better. We are our world. I mean, as soon as you come to realize that, uh, I mean, that's the moment it dawns on you that the, the cure to what's ailing you or what's ailing this world, it's inside. I don't think I've ever met anyone that I could have this kind of conversation with. I mean, are you from this planet? Don't get me started. So, you're a humanist. You believe in the Renaissance ideal? Yeah, I mean, I believe the key to success is not attempting to be the best at one particular thing, but to be the best human being you can be. I mean, your example, literally being you can change the course of history. Your presence can inspire or it can discourage. And if someone's gonna be watching you, you might as well bring your A-game, right? Another crazy analogy, bear with me, I'm a writer, so. Oh, so you're a writer. Mainly. But I feel like uh, thousands of people are just struggling on some other plane. And they just watched me get dropped in the middle of the fucking ocean with no land in sight. Right? And they're watching me through some portal or something. And I'm just swimming and swimming. And I have no idea if I'll ever reach land. But I just keep swimming. And I'm getting tired. And I can't go on for too much longer. But I know if I give up and I drown, those thousand fucking people are gonna give up too. So it's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm keeping you. You have something no, to do? No, not at all. That was uh, very stimulating. Stimulating? Yeah, life's been so dull. I just wake up every morning and feel this. Sadness? Yeah. You're doing something against your nature. You're not being you. Definitely. I mean, 
the way you saw me, like just now, that's who I am, you know? Just like enjoying the day, not taking anything for granted, drawing. You're an artist? Yeah, mainly. I mean, not really. I work at my brother's company. I mean, what does that have to do with anything? That's what you do for food, to eat. It's not who you are. You are an artist. Say it. I am an artist. I'm... I am an artist. God, that felt good. <laughs> Oh, no. Everything okay? Uh, yeah, that's just my brother and my fiance. Uh, could you just give me a sec? Hey there, buddy. You hungry? <laughs> Me too. I was thinking. Me 
maybe you and I, we could take a trip. I have this meeting in New York. It might be a potential investment opportunity. I'm sorry, Victor, I just... No, I'm the one who's sorry. Should have never said that to you in the park. I should have known something was wrong. You know what? Forget about the meeting, forget about the trip. How about we just start over? Like from square one? Yeah. Let's just start over again. Just, I don't think we're on the same wavelength. Won't you give me a chance to get there? Don't you think I deserve that at least? I don't want to work for my brother anymore. And the thought of having to go to that office every day, it makes me sick. Why? always made me sick. Ever since school. What do you mean? You seem fine in class. But I wasn't. Every day on the way to our classes, I had to walk by the arts and drama department. And one day, these two students, they held the door open for me, like I was one of them. So I went into the auditorium. These two students were rehearsing, so... I sat down, and I felt this, like, peace wash over me. And then these two students to my left, they started talking about Botticelli. Like people gossip. They were comparing the works of Botticelli. And, and when I chimed in, it was like they knew me. Like I belonged there. Every part of my being told me not to pass by those classes. But I did. Every day after that. My heart told me that that's where I belonged. But my brain said, What would Carlos say? What would Carlos say? You know what your brother would say? That it's crazy to get a degree in the arts. <laughs> Art is a hobby, plain and simple. People make careers out of this. I think people make careers out of this out of sheer luck. And that's the truth. And you have to face the truth, Isabella. People who care about you will always tell you the truth. Remember that. I am facing the truth, Victor. And the truth is, I'm leaving you. Your brother's not gonna like that. I don't care. I don't care! I don't care! What is this, the fucking Middle Ages? My brother just wants me to marry you so our family can inherit your father's businesses. That's what this is about! He wants you to marry me because he knows I'm right for you, because I care for you, Isabella. What you're going through right now is completely normal. Change is scary, and the grass is always greener on the... Okay, space. I'll give you space. I'll pack up my bags, go to that meeting in New York, and you'll have one week off. And then when, when I come back, we'll see. Whatever decision you make, I support you. You seem pretty focused. Hmm? Oh yeah, you know me. Please don't forget dinner tomorrow. I won't. You've only told me like a hundred times. You always manage to come up with an excuse and not show it up. It was for work.
Don't tell me you're still considering starting your own business. Uh, yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? By the time my brother steps down, he'll be making you number two. And I'm grateful. Extremely. And as long as I'm here, I'll break my back for him. But keep in mind, I never asked to be promoted. It was always my intention to go off on my own when I could. Being number two is better than being number 23 or whatever I was. But I don't want to be number two for the rest of my life. Or maybe you don't realize the magnitude of the opportunity I gave to you. The opportunity you gave me. I thought it was your brother. <laughs> Come on, baby. You know he couldn't resist his baby sister. So you're telling me getting promoted was just a surprise lollipop for his baby sister? I figured us dating had something to do with it, but you asked him to promote me? Yes. I don't know what to say to that. Well, a little gratitude would be nice. I mean, do you know how much money you could be making if you moved from your current position to CFO? And you want to give that all up, throw that all out to run a startup company? Sweetheart, all of this was a startup at one point. You know that, right? <sighs> Baby, look, I really appreciate your ambition and I love it. I love that about you. But my dad and my brother, honestly, this stays between you and I, they just got lucky. Yeah, because all of this was financed on lottery money, right? Do you have any idea how many businesses fail daily? Or how many businesses have even failed to launch? It's not that their founders have bad ideas, it's just that the right person didn't get to them at the right time. And honestly, that's what it really boils down to at the end of the day. Being in the right place at the right time. That's it, huh? Yeah. Look, I know about business. I've been around for a while, and I think I know what I'm talking about. And, you know, somebody that cares for you is always going to tell you the truth. Remember that. Except you just told me a half-truth. Look, I'll, uh, I'll be there, okay? Huh? What? Huh? Nothing. I'm just talking to myself. Check this out. And Joanna said, supposedly, now Juan is banging Jessica. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? It's crazy. Oh, babe, by the way, this weekend, you're not going to the game. Sorry. What? Babe, I need you. Please, I know, I know. For what? I've already been planning this for weeks. I told you. I, I thought we talked about this. I've already missed so many games with the guys, and it's about time I go to one for once. Okay, and you're gonna have to miss another. I'm so sorry, okay? It's just my aunt, she hates me, okay? I'm not gonna show up there without you, and I, I, want, I want her to see you. I want her to see us, and I want you to be there for me, okay? Honestly, I wanna flaunt you. I want her to see that we're okay, that we're doing well, that we have a nice car, and I, I want, I could even ask you for money in front of her so she sees that we're okay, and that you have cash, you have money, babe. Hey, where are you going? Can you please not turn your back on me? Please.
Can you please just take a seat so we can Sorry, finish talking? Sorry, something I uh, gotta use the bathroom. I can only swallow some Say bullshit. Say what? Huh? Tell what? yourself again? I used to do that too, you know. When I was a kid, I used to have this uh, imaginary friend. Honestly, I still talk to him from time to time. Do you? Talk to yours? <laughs> no. Yours. No, no. I don't, I don't have a... Look, man, I, I gotta use the bathroom, so I'm just gonna... Go Number ahead. one, two, or three. What? Why? Why does that matter? Wait, what's number three? <laughs> what? No, no. <laughs> well, at least it's not number four. The fuck is number four? <laughs> Relax, man. There's no number four. Take it easy, dude. What the hell? What's going on, man? You took the job? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> nah, man. Seriously, I'm fine. For now, uh, this works for me. Have you written any more of the novel? No. Uh, I'm the worst writer's block I've ever had. <laughs> Maybe Dad was right. Well, you too. What are you talking about, man? Frank, listen. No, nah, man. You listen. Let's talk about this some other time, man. <clears throat> Let me get back to work. Frank, please listen. I'm going to get you a better job. No. No. Okay? I'm good. This is my lot in life. All right? My choice has put me here. This is my fate. Nobody can say I didn't try, though, right? Ah, you know what? I'm, I'm actually lucky. Man, I'm lucky to have uh, a job. I'm lucky to have you. I mean, otherwise I'd probably be on the streets begging. I'm just gonna stop pushing. I'm gonna be thankful for what I have and, you know, grass is always greener, right? No. This is good. Misery is a writer's best friend. You used to say that when we were kids, remember? What was it, what was it that Dumas said about confinement? That, that compression is needed in order to ignite gunpowder? You're trapped like Edmund was in Monte Cristo. You're trapped in this unwanted existence. But just stay strong and eventually that spark will come to you. A target will appear and you'll pull that trigger and that gunpowder will ignite. The next time I see you, I want you to surprise me with more pages. And I'm gonna surprise you with a better job. Let's talk more later. <clears throat> I gotta get back to work, man. <clears throat>
Frank. You must be the new janitor. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. My name is Frank. Oh, Frank. Awesome. Frank. Great. Um, listen, the bathrooms, they're very, very dirty. They're disgusting. Horrendous. Have you cleaned them yet? Yeah, they're listen, clean. By the way, um, if you could just run down the street and get some coffee. I like mine a very special way, okay? Oh, yeah. And when you get a chance, please, I need you to pass by the dry cleaners and pick up my brother's suit. It's so important. He has a very important business meeting tomorrow. You know how that goes. Or maybe you don't because you're a janitor. Um, so please make sure it is a dirty chai double espresso and when they start steeping the milk if you could Hold please make sure that they <clears throat> oh I was going too fast I'm so sorry I'll write it down for you actually no, 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 what? no, no. you have a notepad because maybe you could write it down I don't need to write this down no you do need to write this down. no I don't need to write this down because I don't need to remember your coffee order like I don't need to remember to pick up those suits <laughs> you're a comedian too I love that no. Okay, um, I really need you to get this right. Okay, so please, if you... No. No. You you heard me pretty clearly. That's not my job. Oh, it's not no. your job. It's not my job. I'm a janitor. My job's to clean. 
I'm not an errand boy. You need me to clean something, I'll do it without hesitation or without question. But beyond that, I mean, you know, I might be able to do those things, but my title would have to change. It would have to change to errand boy slash janitor. And because my duties have now doubled, my pay would have to reflect that. Not to mention, if I'm using my vehicle to collect said items, I would need reimbursement and gas. Or maybe the company can shut provide an official errand boy Just vehicle. Just shut the fuck up! Okay, oh. do you know who the fuck I am here? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously you don't. You know what? You want something to clean? Here you go. I'll give you something to fucking clean. Clean that shit up. Fuck you! Go uh, ahead, hey, clean it. Hey, what the fuck is going on here? Lily, what are you doing? This man is being belligerent, okay? He needs to be terminated immediately, right now. Well, well, hold on. We should hear his side of the story. His side? <laughs> his side? I'm your Lily, fuck Lily. This is what I saw. I saw you shoving those papers off that desk like a little girl having a temper tantrum or something. I hope he said something serious, because if he didn't, something serious might happen to you, okay? <clears throat> uh, that's not really necessary, sir. It was uh, miscommunication. Okay, listen, Lily, clean this shit up. Hey, you in my office right now. What happened in there? I want the truth. Well, Miss mm, Estevez was confused about my duties here. What do you mean? I was hired to be a janitor, right? Yeah. And we both know what the duties of a janitor are. Yeah, where are you going with this, man? Well, Miss Estevez ordered me to get coffee and your suits from the dry cleaners. I told her to go get them, man. Well, she ordered me to do it, and I just explained to her it's not my job to do those things. But if you insist on me doing it, I will. But my title has to change, along with my pay. Plus, I would need some form of reimbursement and gas and... I, I'm sorry, man. I, I apologize. You're right. That's not your job. Hey, uh, I respect you had the courage to stand up to my sister. She's got a good heart, man. Believe it or not. But I confess I might have spoiled her a bit. She's the, the baby of the family, you see, and uh, well. We lost her parents when she was very young, and between our grandparents and I, well, I bought her a lot of things, all right? I just never wanted that gorgeous smile on her face ever go away. I admit that in the process, I may have made things a little easy on her, perhaps a little too easy. She doesn't quite appreciate what she has, her job, her family. Listen, man. I want you to know I'm not one to condone any one of my employees being taken advantage of, okay? Whether intentionally or not. I mean, it happens all the time, you know. People are just scared to speak up because they because they need the job so badly. Then a guy like you and I comes along. You and I, we're not the type to accept the status quo. You and I, we're the guys that people look to, all right? The movers and shakers, the pioneers, that's who we are. We don't take things lying down, we, we make things happen. My father was a janitor. He was? Yeah. His first job in this country. But you know what? When people asked him what it is he did, who he was, he'd say he was an entrepreneur.
Cause it is hard. A janitor just, just wasn't who he was. While he was doing this job, every morning he'd wake up and he'd feel this, this sadness, like, like something was off, like, like he was constantly eating something he was allergic to. All right. And the only thing that kept him from suffocating to death was constantly reminding himself who he was, who he really was. As he devoured all kinds of books and anything business. After my parents died, I worked as a janitor too. I mean, I could have been uh, my grandfather's assistant and done a little nine to five, but I needed to know. I needed to know what my father went through. I needed to know what the people I'd be leading were going through. So people find that this profession, a janitor, for one reason or another is their calling. And if it is your calling, there is absolutely no shame in that, man, okay? It's not about how much money you make. It's about finding a job that you can't wait to jump out of bed and go do. Follow your bliss. You hear that? Joseph Campbell. You read Joe Campbell? Yeah. Yeah, I love his stuff, man. We are all heroes and our own legend. And the moment we discover that, it's the moment we discover our potential. We discover that life isn't as dull as it may seem. Especially once we leave our, our comfort zones, our home village, so to speak, and accept the call to adventure from the old wizard. I'm your old wizard, Frank. That's right. I'm a regular fucking Merlin. And I'm asking you to reach out and pull a sword out of the stone. Do you have any experience in sales? Um, well. Show me this pen. How often do you use this pen, Carlos? Pretty often, actually. I used it this morning. I had this idea and I wrote it down. Well, I would imagine that would be the best use for this pen. <laughs> Writing down stuff, right? But you didn't just write any old thing down, did you? No. You wrote down an idea. An idea. This company, all of this was at one point nothing but an idea. So when you get down to it, your tool for building your world, your ideal world, your perfect world, is this pen. So you're right, Carlos. You are Merlin. And this pen in my hand is your wand. And what's a wizard without his wand, right? Now, normally this pen is about a hundred dollars, but I'm not one to part a wizard with his tool of the trade. Plus, I respect you. So for just fifty dollars, you can have your pen back. <laughs> Give my fucking wand back. Frank. That was fucking phenomenal, man. Hey, drop's yours if you want it. That is, if uh, you accept your call to adventure. I'm having dinner tonight with my family and head executives. I want you to be there. That way you can be your new direct supervisor, Al, and everybody can welcome you aboard. Bro. Well, I finally met your fiance. Wish it was under better circumstances. Oh, shit, man. Did she get you fired? I I'm sorry. No, man. Actually, uh, her actions led me to getting a better job. Looks like I report to you now. No way. You're my new sales agent. 
Looks that way. Carlos invited me for dinner. What? Yeah. He never invites anybody from my team over for dinner. It's always strictly execs. Well, he must see something special in you. Oh, and he doesn't know that we're brothers. Uh, nobody does. Dude, does Lily even know you have a brother? I told her. Yeah? I told her you were traveling. Man, look, we weren't always on the best terms, and it was my fault, okay? I admit it, it was my fault. I, you were, you were always trying to make things better, and me, well, I was just happy to be in Dad's favor for once. All right, just stop. Don't worry, man. You're my little brother. Let's pretend it never happened. Dad's gonna be happy. Psh. Yeah, but now Mom, she'll be sad I gave up writing. Mom always backed me up, man. What was that story she used to tell us when we were growing up? Um, it was a... Uh, a Samson the Elephant. Do you remember what Samson the Elephant used to say? Where when there's, there's a will, there's, there's, there's a way, and then anything's, anything's possible. Samson the elephant, man, he knew what he was talking about. I'm the dwarf. What? You never quit. I'm the dwarf. I, 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 in my story, remember? You, you're, just, you're just chopping wood for me now uh, until you have enough supplies to get, to get to the dragon and, and kick his ass and, and save the princess and get to the top of the tower and, and you realize who you are and who you were born to be, the knight, the writer. I'll, uh, I'll see you at dinner tonight. Uh, make sure you dress sharp. Do you need a shirt or something? No, man, I'm good. Okay. Oh, and. I'm gonna try to think of a way to tell Carlos that we're brothers. Maybe I could tell him at dinner tonight? Listen, don't worry, all right? I'll just tell him that I didn't know you worked here and that we had a falling out and I, I needed a job and I answered this ad without knowing. Okay? I'll see you soon. So who's this new sales agent you invited? He must be a real hotshot. Well, if a hotshot you meet someone who deserves a chance to shine, then yeah. Uh, it's him. He's pulling up. I'll be right back, guys. Right, I'm gonna go greet him. Is that dinner almost ready, sis? Hey, we're So, who is this guy now? Come on, tell us. You'll see. Come on, man. Give me some intel. Don't let me go to battle blind. Battle? Yeah. He obviously has Carlos' attention. What if he's having doubts about us ever taking over the company? No. No way. Come all, on. Right, all right, calm down, guys. Most likely, he's just going to take over my job when we get promoted, okay? Or most likely, he'll take over as president, and we'll stay exactly the same where we are. Would that be so bad? I mean, we have it pretty good. Maybe. I don't want to be number two for the rest of my life. Yes? I'll show you a second. Smell that? I love me, chef. She loves to cook. She takes it serious, like it's a, an art form. I could play. I'm always a great chef as well. She gets it from her, I think. Uh, well, Isabella, this is Frank. Uh, hey. Hi. I'm honored to give him a shot as an executive in our company. I thought you wanted me to be a sales agent. Nah, actually, I was thinking. I think you'd be better shoot as my assistant. I want you to shadow me. I want to learn more about you. See what other tricks you have up your sleeve, man. Then I'll figure out a permanent position for you. Well, thank you. Uh... Hey, why don't you uh, help Isabella uh, finish cooking here? Oh, and, I don't. And uh, yeah. I, I, listen, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. 
guys are great. I gotta use a bathroom. Okay. Great, right? Okay. Okay. See ya. You. You. I thought you were a writer. I am. Are you an artist? Always. How do you know my brother? Uh, I must have impressed him with something I said. What can I say? I'm good with words. But, um, I don't know, I'm gonna break his heart once he finds out I'm only in this for the money. Until my writing career takes off. Don't worry about him. He's gonna be fine. I hope so. He's a good guy. He has his moments. Yeah. <clears throat> Is uh, dinner almost ready? Okay. Frank, you ready to be introduced formally? Yeah. Let's do it. Come on. Hi, everybody. Here's Frank, our newest member of our team. The mystery man. Name's Valera. Victor Valera. Frank. I'm, uh, I'm actually, uh, acquainted with Frank here. The fucking janitor. Are you kidding me right now? Is this a joke? Yeah. Where the hell do you know him from? Yeah, how, how, hold Why on didn't you tell me this? Wait, um, may I have some wine? Yes. No, you can't you have can. any wine. There Don't you, give him go. Hey, why is he here? Oh, he came to clean. Yeah. Well, we're not done eating. We haven't even gotten our food yet. Hey, watch your freaking mouth, all right, sis? Frank, here's my guest, okay? And he's no longer a janitor. Frank's now my personal assistant. Wait, what? So how do you know Frank, huh? Well, um, sir. Uh, did you just call me sir? Hold on a second. Did you just call me sir? What, what do you got to tell me, man? No, whenever you start calling me sir, it's mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. bad. Frank is my brother. What? Like your blood brother, the, the writer who's traveling to Europe, or, or is he another one? This is him. This is my one and only big brother. Uh, he's back, and uh, he couldn't find any work, so... You're the number three in my company, and that's the best you could do? Come on, man. Fucking janitor? That's the best you could do for him. He's family, man. All you had to do is ask him. Carlos, uh, he didn't know I was working here until yesterday. I didn't want him to jeopardize his position for me by asking for too much. I mean, you've been so generous to him and uh, I wouldn't want you to think he was taking advantage of your kindness. Plus, I would rather earn my keep. I respect that, man. I really do. That's really admirable. But he would not be taking advantage of me at all. In fact, it would have been expected. I mean, especially seeing how qualified he is. I mean, I... <sighs> your family, man. Shit, you're Al's brother. You're my future brother-in-law. You're, you're Lily's future brother-in-law, right? Lily, he's your brother-in-law. You finally got to meet him. <sighs> this makes me more sense now. This is where you belong, at our table, shoulder to shoulder, with your family. Together, we'll make this company even greater than it ever was. To family. To family. Family? <laughs> Wait, is it bad? I need your cup. I need a whole bottle right now. Well, she has. Okay. To family. family. And to the future. Frank? This is ridiculous. Thank you.
are you thinking about? Thinking about this whole Frank situation. Who? The janitor guy from last night. What about him? It's some kind of conspiracy, I'm telling you. Why would I keep him a secret? You think Frank will willingly clean shit knowing that his brother's number three at our company? Babe, I think you're giving him a little bit too much credit. Come on. But it seems like your brother's smitten with a guy. We have to make a move as soon as possible. Operation Trojan Horse is a go. <laughs> it's time to deploy your friend. Operation who, babe? What'd you say? <laughs> Listen, we'll take Al out of the picture. They'll free you up to be with me. And they'll make the janitor guy look bad in the process. Your sister? She already wants to leave me. She said as much herself. It's perfect. Once Al's gone, we'll figure out what to do with the janitor guy. By then, your sister would have left me. It'll be just you and me with your brother's company, all to ourselves. And with me inheriting my dad's company, the world will be ours. We'll be a power couple, baby. So call your friend the skank, what's her name? Lizzie? Yeah, deploy her. Bro, crazy story. What? So I was having a beer at the logger house like I usually do after work, and one of Lily's friends comes in. I'd seen her before at a party or something, I think. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, she walks in, and she's wearing this tight little red dress. I mean, ass cheeks pouring out, tits just hanging out, legs for miles, man. <laughs> okay, and then she sits down next to me at the bar, and she's like, do I know you? And I'm like, I think we've met. One thing led to another, and she's hitting on me hard, bro. She just reaches over, and grabs my fucking dick, man. No. Right there in front of everybody. <laughs> it was like out of a porno or some shit. And she says to me, you want to get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> did you give in to your baser instincts? I mean, listen, man, I won't judge you if you did, okay? I got I, I to gotta be honest with you. Lily and I don't exactly see eye to eye yet. I mean, she's going to be your wife and all, but I still find that thought... A little hard to digest. I didn't give in, man. No? And I gotta be honest with you, Lily and I are having issues, but I stayed loyal, man. Really? Yeah. I actually had to fucking slap her hand away and say, hey, I have a fiancé, okay? Well, I'm proud of you, man. So... So you love her? Lily? I think so. I mean, she's not perfect, I know, but I've seen her at her best, and I see that she has so much potential. Then I'll try harder to get along with her. Thanks, bro. No problem, man. Listen, <clears throat> I just remembered, uh, do you have Isabella's number? Uh, yeah, why? Carlos had me draft up this report, and he wanted me to meet up with her so I can get her, her opinion on it. Can't you just email it? Uh, he wants me to collaborate with her. Okay. Yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. Thanks, man. Let's talk again soon. Sounds like a plan. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Yo, and watch out for those crazy chicks in red dresses, huh? I will. I'll see you. Yo, but text me, alright? This is not funny. It's not a laughing matter. These guys are gonna be running rampant all week. By the time I get back, one of them could be fucking president. Are you listening to me? I love you.
This is Isabella. Hey. Oh. Yeah, uh, this is Frank. Frank? Hi. Uh, listen, I was wondering if, if you'd meet with me. Uh, sure. Uh, about what? Well, well I mean, I, I, I figured we'd hang out. You seem like a real cool person. Uh, someone on my wavelength. Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, when? Well, how about um, in an hour? Uh, sounds good. Uh, where? Uh, where are you going? Out. With who? With Jenny. We're going to catch a chick flick. But I'm leaving tomorrow. What happened to us giving each other space until you got back? Hey, Lily. The general orders you to report for booty immediately. Oh, yeah. Get your flying ass over here. Isabella's gone for a few hours. All right.
Carlos, I'm sorry. I know how much you love your sisters. This, this is a fucking outrage. Where is she? And where is he? Isabella, she doesn't want to come to work with me anymore. I, I apologize, man. Car this, 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 this must be devastating. Carlos, um, look, if you could just do me a favor, get in my office, you can go ahead and take the rest of the day off. You don't, you shouldn't be here when I confront her about this. All right? Yes, sir. What if we tell everyone the truth? About us? About everything. All right. What do you mean? What if we tell everyone that we're together, that we're artists, that we always have been, and that we always will be, even if they want us to be something else? <laughs> Let's tell them we are who we are, and we're together. Let's tell them we're gonna quit the company. Let's tell them everything. <clears throat> Isabella, uh... I'll call my brother and tell him I'm not going to work tomorrow. That I'm done. And, and then I'll call Victor and tell him we're done. I've got some money saved up. We can get a place of our own and write and paint and Listen, be let's us. Let's not be hasty. What if you kept us a secret for just a little bit longer, okay? I mean, just till I finish the book and, and it gets published and maybe I get a little bit more money and... But I've got more than enough savings. You can write full time. Okay. So what if it doesn't get picked up? Hmm? I mean, what if it fucking sucks? It doesn't suck. It's awesome. No. Okay, the opportunity your brother has given me, I can't risk losing that. But, but you're not a businessman, you're a writer. Oh, come on, that's a pipe dream. Let's be real, okay? We will run out of money. All right, I'm not good enough, I can't compete. I mean, I've never had the support some of these guys have had. I, let's be honest, I've never had any fucking support. I'm telling you, we will run out of money if you rely on me getting a book published. Isabella, do you know what it's like living off fucking rice for months at a time? Or worse, not knowing when the next meal's coming. Huh? I don't want that for you. I'm willing to take that risk. For us. For who we are. But I'm not willing to risk that. Okay? Never again. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Who are you? Oh, fuck that. Listen, I've missed so much in my life for that bullshit hobby of mine. When my friends were all out on the weekends, I was inside fucking writing. I've missed so many opportunities and I've sacrificed so much for what? To write words on a piece of paper that no one's gonna read anyways? I read them. Oh, and are you gonna pay our bills? Forever? With what money after your savings have dried up? Huh? You think your paintings are gonna pay for the bills? <laughs> Good luck selling one of those masterpieces on Ocean Drive. Wow, you think you're a fucking genius, huh? Regular fucking virtuoso, fucking Da Vinci reincarnated, right? Listen to me, you are a dime a dozen in this town. I don't care. I believe if I'm true to myself, people will connect with my art. Oh. You're not an artist. You're a coward. Yeah, a coward who's gonna eat good and not worry about his car breaking down because you know what, by next month, I'll have a brand new fucking ride. And no more fucking moto either. I'm renting a big ass four bedroom house for myself so I can just fucking reach my arms out and not touch the fucking walls. Huh? I should have given this shit up a long fucking time ago. If I would have put half as much effort into business as I had into writing, I'd be a fucking billionaire by now. I should have stopped back when I was a kid. When I had to drop to my fucking knees and beg my parents to read just one page of my story. 
Just one fucking page of my story. One goddamn page of my story. Would it have killed them to read one page? Just one fucking word. Maybe it would have. I should have taken a hint. I should have taken a goddamn hint, but nah. My dad fucking passes diamond fucking skull to me. And there I was, a borderline fucking bum at almost 30 years old. Until your, your brother offered me this position. I'm sorry. Uh, there's no way in hell I can give this up. Okay? My heart is fucking raw. I can't take hardship anymore. Not like I used to. Alright, I'm done. If I'm gonna sacrifice, it's gonna be for a buck or two, something tangible, not some 500 year old ideal. Okay? The truth, Isabella, the cold hard truth about this is that money can buy happiness. Anything can be bought, and that's the truth. And I'm telling you this because I care about you. People will only tell you the truth if they really care about you. I learned that the hard way. And I know it, and I know it may have come out a bit harsh, and I'm sorry, but the sooner you learn this, the better. Trust me on that. Come in. Do you have something you want to tell me? Yeah. A lot, actually. So you admit it then? Admit what? Who gave you these? Does it matter? Isabella, how could you? What would mom and dad say? Mom and dad would have never let me get with Victor in the first place. You're the one who pushed us together just so our family's businesses could merge. I just want what's best for you, okay? Is he really such a bad guy? I mean, he's smart, he's ambitious, and I know he'll take care of you. Did you never love him? I was ignorant. Blind. I don't even think I knew what true love was until I... Until you met him? I quit. Isabella, hold on a second, wait. I'm not angry, okay? There's gotta be a way we can work this out. No, I quit. Why? You treat me as if I don't remember. I, I might have been young, but how could I forget? The beautiful music from Dad playing at the grand piano and, and Mom's voice as she sung me to sleep, the voice of an angel. That it was. I'm sorry, Carlos. I'm an artist, like our parents before me. And I know that's not what you want me to be.
to be vice president now, you have to be wholehearted, okay? And I don't know if, uh, I don't know if your heart is in Estevez Technologies anymore. Is it? No. It isn't. And my heart's no longer your sister's either. I got a good friend. He's a venture capitalist and he's looking for some new investments. I'll give him a call for you, put in a good word. Listen, man, I respect your ambition, but the truth is, everybody wants to be the damn boss so they find out the price you gotta pay to be one. But I know you're the fine man. All right, so keep in touch. keep heading towards the tower and we kick that dragon's ass <laughs> and then you're gonna apologize to Isabella and then you're gonna get the princess huh huh sir knight <laughs> I'll make some phone calls oh guess what I'm starting my own publishing company <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to finish that book I'm gonna need something to publish pretty soon we're gonna be rich, man. You'll see. And all you're gonna have to focus on is writing. I promise. In the words of the great Samson the Elephant. Ah, uh, not Samson the Elephant. Where there's a will, there's a way, and anything is possible. Go! Anything is possible. <laughs>
Frank. Come no. on, man. Wait. Give me out, man. I thought we talked about everything, Carlos. Not everything, man. Listen. There's a lot more I need to tell you. A lot more I need to tell my sister. Is that the classified as? I'm sorry, man. I... I know you've read Joe Campbell, but but have you ever heard of a guy named Milo Murray? Of course, that's my favorite writer. Really? And the guy's an inspiration. He wrote Across the Stars when he was only 16. That he did. Did you know he worked in the uh, technology business too? Did. Before he started studying and selling technology, he was already writing across the stars for years, since he was a little kid. You know what? He continued writing it, even uh, as he worked at that technology company. And it wasn't until uh, a tragedy, or many, I should say, that he contemplated quitting on writing. Like I'm sure you have. You've quit on it, haven't you? Uh, I've just been through a lot. Okay. I don't know if it's worth it anymore. A fan and an aspiring writer once told Milo the same thing in a letter. You know what he said? He said, if you had to ask yourself that, then it probably isn't worth it. Unless you're lying to yourself, telling yourself you don't feel that, that urge, that urge to express all that stuff surging up inside, that urge to express an, an idea, an idea that just maybe might inspire someone to change the world, or simply to take another step, take one more breath in, or Something like that. He once said also that uh, if he couldn't write, he, he couldn't function. He said there was always this constant sadness when he wasn't writing, like like something was just off. Listen, I do want to write, okay? I want to write badly. But lately my mind has just been blank. Another aspiring writer asked Milo how to overcome writer's block. He said to describe the indescribable, oblivion. The oblivion that his mind had become. He said to describe that, that utter frustration, that, that gut-wrenching doubt. He said if, if he did that, then that writer's block would be gone. Like a Miami thunderstorm. Here. Wreaking havoc one second, with no end in sight, and then gone, like it never was. The blue sky overhead, the sun shining brightly, soothing him, warming him, reassuring him that it was always there, and it always would be. Or something along those lines. He said you could do that, or you can find yourself amused. Man, if I tell you another story about Milo Murray, even today, Milo Murray can still see her <laughs> frolicking across that stage as graceful as a swan. He's 20 years old, still in college, his whole life ahead of him. Now, no matter what any man will tell you, there's always a certain level of anxiety when approaching a beautiful woman. But with her, there was nothing, man. There was absolutely no fear, no doubt. 
And when he finally did approach her, she was coming out of the theater. He, uh, he couldn't fuck it up, even if he tried. You know why? Because he was being him, and she was being her. And they both loved who they truly were. When he was with her, man, the words just flowed on the page, okay? His best work, his most prolific time in his career was, was when he was with her. You see, their, their passion for each other, it was like a never ending well, a fuel that helped ignite their, their every being. But what happened? I mean, he must have written 20 books during that period and then he just stopped. Well, she, um, that woman, his, his muse, she's gone, okay? Along with his parents. I used that pen name because I was just so self-conscious of my work, man. Right? Even after I got picked up by the small publishing company, I never got to tell my parents that the, the best-selling book on TV, that that was written by me, man. Oh, they would have been so proud. Oh, so proud. See, my books only got famous after they died. And... I never thought much of them, really. And, and, and then out of nowhere, years later, they just blew up, man. And I, I used that money to, to build up my dad's company to what it is today, in his honor. I never got to tell my parents about my books. And I, I never got to tell her how sorry I was. See, I... I took it for granted, man. All right, and because of me, because of me, she died. They all did. It's all my fault, man. Fuck. She found out I cheated on her, and she left the house real stressed. And, you know, of course, she was upset. And she just. She was just about to tell me the news. She was fucking pregnant. But she suspected what I was doing and she hired a PI and the guy broke it to her. Of course, she was devastated. She, she ran out of the house. Just as my parents were pulling in for a visit. What are the fucking odds of that? She told my parents what I'd done, and my dad, he said, well, you know, why don't we go for a drive, you know, just to... And then this freak storm hit in my... My dad lost control. Yeah. Do you have a muse, Frank? Yeah. Thought I did. I know you do. I don't know who your muse is. Listen to me, man. Don't take it for granted. Okay? You'll find that she doesn't just inspire you to be a better writer. You'll find that she inspires you to be a better man. <clears throat> Hey, I, uh, I gotta go, but, uh, wow, Milo, <clears throat> thank you. Isabella. 
Hey. Isabella, what are you doing? Hey, look at me. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Hey, come on. Just look at me for a second, okay? Get, get your finger off the trigger, please. Isabella, look at me. Get Where your should finger off. I? I have nothing left to look for. Please. Just put the gun down. Isabella, I'm begging you, okay? I'm begging you to just put the gun down, okay? And meet me at the spot tomorrow at 6. Can you do that? Can we just take this one step at a time? You meet me there tomorrow and I'll have my manuscript ready for you to read. Okay, you read one fucking page of it, and if you don't like it, then maybe it'll kill you anyways. Huh? Just put the gun down, please. Please. You can finish your novel? Yes. I'm gonna finish your novel. Okay? You were right. Huh? I'm a fucking writer. Okay? And you are my muse. Okay? So I need you to put the fucking gun down. Do you understand what I'm saying? You help me transcend my cowardice. Meet me at the spot tomorrow. Instead of a soap opera, isn't it? Who gave you this? Al? Frank? Sabella? That's Photoshop, man. I've sold all my shares, Victor. Including the ones that were going to you. I sold them all to my competitors. The company's gone, man. That's a lie. It's not true. I'm not lying. The company's been liquidated. It's a tragedy what happened to your father's stocks. But with that disastrous oil spill in the Gulf, so you left with nothing, man. You have a lesson to learn. And unfortunately, so does my sister. It breaks my heart that she hurt her own flesh and blood like this just for personal gain or out of jealousy. She was always jealous of her sister. Always. Always jealous of Isabella. But now, now you two are to be tested. If you pass this test, just maybe, just maybe you have a chance of redemption. Welcome to poverty, man. The greatest teacher a man can have. And its first lesson will be humility. And 
If you plan on being a good person someday, your first step will be gaining this virtue. Because, well, you can't have any of the other ones without that one. I'll get out of my sight. You take good care of my baby sister, okay? If you truly care about each other, you'll get through this together. Maybe one day, just maybe, you two can rejoin me at my table. Yes, sir. Get your asses in here. I remember coming home from school, hearing that heavenly music, and I'd, I'd find you there every day sitting on Dad's lap. As he played that gorgeous grand piano, you'd be there <laughs> singing along with mom. After they died, it, well, it reminded me of, of the pain of the absence, that piano. I, ex I expected to find them there, singing and playing that thing every fucking day. But all there was was this it's disgusting, sickening silence. And this thing, this, this fucking big reminder of our loss just staring back at me. Forgive me, sis, but I, I, I lost it. I took a sledgehammer and I just smashed it to pieces. It was supposed to go to you. I'm sorry, you were supposed to be an artist. You're always supposed to be an artist. Just like them, just like our parents. <sighs> Did you know that they like to paint too? I burned all their paintings. Exquisite works. <sighs> I'm sorry, I was weak. I tried to make you something you weren't. And so, this is my first step toward redemption. First, I secured a deal with an art broker who owes me a few favors. I'm gonna be your official patron now. Second, I sold all of my shares. Estevez Technologies is no more. It will be reborn as Palmer and I Publishing Group. We're gonna publish Frank's books. You guys can have these offices too. I'll transfer the deed over as soon as possible. And don't worry, guys, I'm just a limited investor. Just a money guy. I won't be stepping on your toes. I'm leaving as planned. Going to Europe for a bit. And Frank, in case you're wondering, you have my blessing to take my sister. Thanks.